the wipe is ever so slowly inching closer and because of that I wanted to make a video basically talking about some of the first things that come to my mind when I'm trying to troubleshoot builds for those of you who have been on PC Sherpa Live uh, in my PC Sherpa series and stuff like that. We'll go through a laundry list of different things that you should check before you actually tune your settings for the next Tarkov wipe. Again, this is not going to go through Tarkov settings directly because, again, the game is going to wipe soon. And if you'd like to check out my most recent settings guide for any given wipe, you will see that on my channel, I'm sure. This video won't only apply to those who are watching this a week or two before the wipe, though. It'll contain some useful information regardless of what time you're watching it. Hopefully through this guide, which I'm going to attempt to make as quick as possible, I always say that. Hope that you get a little bit of understanding and at least know where to go to get some more information uh, about the various different things that I discuss. If this video helps you to figure out those issues, please do hit the usual buttons down below as it does help the channel a lot. But more importantly, besides the plug stuff, if you have any questions or concerns after watching this video or during it, feel free to join the Discord. It is the very first link in the video description. And in there, you can choose a role in the role request channel and then get access to every single channel where you can ask questions, get some help from other people into the Discord who want to help you, and sometimes even me too. There's also my streams, which I do on Friday at 6.30 p.m. CST and on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. CST. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's get straight into the content. The first thing is de-bloating. Obviously, a lot of people tend to go to their task manager right in here, and they go to the startup apps in here and try to think of any apps that they can disable here for starting up when your system starts up. Well, this is a good practice to at least check and see what's running on startup. There are some other places where you can see some startup apps that are not through Task Manager. And some of these apps may have other tasks inside or services, I should say, not to spoil this, that are hiding in other applications that you should address. The first place that you may have seen me look all the time in is services.msc. So if you hit Windows key and R on your keyboard, you'll see this services.msc thing right here. You're going to want to type this in. So I'll type it again, services.msc. Inside of the services MSC window, you're going to see a host of different things. But don't worry, it's not that complex. All we're going to do is we're going to sort by name to where you have it set up like me, where it is alphabetically sorted. And then you're gonna to wanna to sort by startup type. This will put all of the automatically running tasks first and foremost. Now, a lot of these are sourced from Windows, but depending on what you've installed, there can be a bunch of different applications that have, say, update tasks or things like that that are constantly running in the background. RGB services, peripheral software, and the like can also have a significant impact, and they can be found in here too. If you find something that you want to disable, say if I take this print spooler here, you don't have to disable this, but this is just for example, I would go to properties, you would set the startup type to be at manual instead of automatic, and then you would stop the service if it was already running. Once you've stopped it, and it says the service status has been stopped, and the startup type is manual, you can apply. The only reason that I set to manual instead of, say, disabled, is so that if you want to boot up that service for any given reason, or if an application requests to, it can. And so it will when it's requested, but not automatically. Now, what you will disable, again, depends on what system you have and what things you've installed. With that out of the way, the next place where you can find some more startup things is in the task scheduler application. So to find that, you can just simply go to the search bar and type task, and you'll probably see task scheduler right here. When you have this selected, just run it, and then you'll be brought to this screen right here. When you're in this, you just hit task scheduler library, and in here, you're going to probably see some more listed tasks that are automatically scheduled. These can be from other apps or stuff that Windows has put in. This is different from the services. <laughs> this is different from the services tab, though, because in this, you're going to be able to see, for example, that some are scheduled to run at one time every single day, one hour every single day. It can have multiple different triggers. It could run on the startup. It could run on log on for any user, etc., etc. If there's a task in here that you would not like to automatically run at whatever it scheduled itself to run at, you can simply right click on it and then hit disable. I'll enable this just so you can see that. Right here, it's the third option, you just disable it. And then whatever triggers it had to run are now disabled. 
and you're good to go. Again though, research what you're disabling so that you know if anything that you're disabling is going to cause issues with the applications you're using. Overall though, this can be a great way to reduce the amount of random things going on in the background. Oh, while you're playing the game. Anyway, with those out of the way, it's time to go to something a bit more important than, say, these tasks, and something that a lot of people can overlook too. That is a simple PC health check. You probably have heard this a lot in different optimization videos, but it's something that a lot of people tend to ignore. A lot of people can push off doing Windows updates, for example, in your settings, Obviously, you're going to want to check for updates if they're available and get those downloaded. But even more importantly than that, you can actually make sure that you have a repaired install that doesn't have any corrupt files inside of it. You'd be surprised with these few commands how many people have actually helped. There's been so many people who have gone through and optimized things, quote unquote, by changing random registry values and just blindly following videos, and that actually degraded their performance in the long run. So let me take you through those couple of commands so that you can have that repaired. To do that, you just go to CMD. You just type CMD in the search bar. It's gonna be the command prompt. You're gonna to wanna to run that as an administrator. The two commands that I'm going to tell you to run in here are SFC slash scan now and DISM slash online slash cleanup dash image slash restore health. System file checker uses cached compressed files inside of your Windows install to try and repair corrupted system files, whereas DISM uses the Windows updater. So if you've disabled the Windows update for any given reason, that command may not work properly. If you're having issues, run those commands and then you're good to go. Let's get to the next part though. Another common thing that I see a lot is paging files being put on the wrong drives. This is not necessarily the end user's fault, but it can result in massive performance issues, especially on maps where they start to overflow on VRAM and RAM and start to dip into your paging file more often. I've made a whole video on this topic, so I'll make sure to link that in the description, but I will quickly take you to where you should check to make sure that it's not placed on say a hard drive or a slower drive if you have that in your system. To do that, you just hit Windows key R again. And in here, you're gonna to want to type system properties advanced like that and hit enter. You've probably seen this video or video. Wow. You've probably seen this menu before. If you have watched any other performance videos, you're gonna to wanna to go to performance settings. And in here, you're gonna to wanna to go to advanced. In here, you will see the virtual memory section. You're going to want to hit change. And then, for example, for me, I have a drive that is a hard drive. So for that drive, I made sure that this has no paging file on it whatsoever. For Tarkov in particular, they recommend that you... <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. The ideal situation is to have a separate SSD that is not the game SSD that you can put the paging file onto. I, I know, I know that sounds crazy. You don't have to do that in reality. You can have it just to be on whatever SSD you have in your system that's quick enough. Normally that's gonna be your C drive and that's also probably where you have Tarkov installed as well. That will be fine for most users. Anyway, if you've made sure that's all set correctly, let's get out of there and get to the next thing, which is driver updates. I, again, this is something that a lot of people overlook and I know it sounds simple and I know it's also easy to blame some of those updates for performance degradation, but there's more to it than just graphics card driver updates. Even though it's good to make sure you're up to date on getting recent drivers that are stable anyway, you have the chipset drivers, which are especially important if you're playing on an AMD system. There's been several users that have helped in the past with AMD systems that have simply took them to update their chipset drivers and they've gotten massive boosts to their performance. I'll leave that link for AMD users in the description so you can see that. If you want a more general place to find most of your motherboard drivers and things like that, you simply look up your motherboard, go to its page, and normally it's labeled support or something similar to go in ahead and download all the stuff that you need. On top of that, it's also good practice to update your BIOS once in a while. The BIOS is basically that screen that you get when you slam your keyboard's delete key 13,000 times on boot up. Making sure that's up to date is also a good way to improve memory stability and security. There can be minor degradations to performance, but on the flip side, you'll get that increased memory stability and may have a opportunity to tune more things in the future, which is something we'll cover shortly. Keep in mind though, if you go to update your BIOS, you will have to reset any settings that were previously applied unless you properly saved them. 
Make sure after you update the BIOS to go ahead and reapply those settings as long as you know what settings you need to reapply. Speaking of BIOS settings, that's another thing I want to cover really quickly. A lot, and I mean a lot of people, especially if they update their BIOS, tend to forget to enable some pretty common sense things in there to help with your performance. XMP is probably the first thing that you've heard of that can help with performance, and that just makes sure that your RAM that you can see inside of your task manager's performance tab is actually running at the speed that you purchased. So for example, if you bought DDR4 3200 and you wanna get that speed from it, you're gonna want to enable XMP because if you don't, you'll get that slower 2133 megatransit per second. Long story short, that number matters because it determines how quickly data can move from the RAM to your CPU for your CPU to do stuff. Having quickly available memory is important, especially for such a cache sensitive game like Escape from Tarkov or actually a good portion of games nowadays. So again, make sure that you've enabled XMP. And if you want to delve into the massive rabbit hole that is tuning your memory, uh, I don't have a guide up on it right now, but I will post some resources in the description for you to take a look at. And you could always join my Discord and ask some of the crazily well-educated people in there uh, who have actually helped me with my memory timings, for instance. Rebar is another thing that I'd highly recommend you enable if you have it. If you have a newer-ish GPU, which would be some of the ones that are listed on screen, 30, 40 series for NVIDIA, and I believe the 6000 and 7000 series for AMD, you're gonna to wanna to go into your BIOS and make sure that rebar is enabled. For NVIDIA, you might have to force it through NVIDIA Profile Inspector, and I'll have a video linked on how to do that below, but that can actually significantly help your performance as well, because again, that determines speed of memory access and how much memory can be accessed at a given time. Except instead of talking about this memory, we're talking about this memory, your dedicated GPU memory, or VRAM. This is pretty sleepy editor me here, uh, just because I decided last minute to cut out a section. I was going to talk about overclocking and undervolting, which are two great ways to either increase your performance or to reduce temps and power draw. But I decided to cut that out because there's a lot of specifics to it. Uh, it's a pretty big rabbit hole and I'd like to just make it per vendor per section. So make one about Nvidia, make one about AMD with GPUs and CPUs and then Intel with CPUs and maybe even a GPU down the line, who knows? But um, I'm gonna leave that out. For now, there are a bunch of great guides already online that I would highly recommend you seek out for help with your specific system. You also need to make sure before going into, especially overclocking, that your thermals are good, because if your thermals are not good, you're gonna have big issues. I tend to use hardware info for that, and the reason why is clearly stated by past me uh, in the video, so let me throw it back to him here. The main reason I like hardware info is because it has a very clear indicator when you are thermal throttling. For example, I can go down to the enhanced thing here, and I can see the temperatures here, and you can clearly see there's a section thermal limit. Am I hitting it? Am I thermal, th thermal throttling for any reason? And this is gonna look different if you're say on uh, Intel system, but nonetheless, you'll be able to see very quickly a yes or no answer if you're thermal throttling under a given workload. And of course, down here, you have the same sort of thing for the GPU. Now, of course, you're not gonna to wanna to do that when you're sitting in the desktop like I am, and I would recommend you to do this A, when you're just playing a game, say in a Tarkov raid, but also B, when you put it under some artificial stress tests, like running an all-core workload on Cinebench or folding at home, which is for charity. There's a bunch of different benchmarking software out there, and I'll leave a couple down below. I'll give you a great picture on if you had the worst case scenario and everything was running at full load, am I thermal throttling? And then you'll also be able to see, well, in a gaming workload, am I thermal throttling? And then compare from there and see what you may need to adjust. Anyway, that's everything, at least everything that I was thinking to include in this video. There's probably some more things that you can check and I'll leave them in the comments below if I remember them or if other people in the comments have some great tips. Again, this is basically all the things that I most commonly ran into were issues on my PC Sherpa Live series. So uh, if you'd like to participate in that, make sure you join my Discord and pop into my streams because I do that at least once a week. So you can tune into those streams and get a chance to talk with me directly about your issues. For now though, with that other stuff out of the way, I really appreciate you watching the end of the video. 
thank you to everybody who supports the channel. Um, I couldn't be, I couldn't do this really without you. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the streams. This is Clem, clocking out. Later.